San Antonio starts right now. Good news, bad news. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. Bad news, it is immediately December 1st. Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> I know, but for some people, they're like, oh, wow, it's finally here. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's not bad because it's not raining outside, so the commute will maybe be a little bit easier. Crystal clear out there, kind of dewy. Uh, you'll find a lot of moisture on the vehicle this morning. Mike Ostrage, uh, can I officially start doing days till Christmas now? Yes. No, Thank you. you can. 20, 24 days. Because uh, it hasn't stopped me since last summer, right? <laughs> no. That, that, well, there's that, more that. good news. Look over my shoulder. We have our Christmas tree up oh, yeah, here in, in the, uh, the weather lab. Now, as far as crystal clear, that depends on where you are because we do have some fairly thick fog around the area because when I came into work, I had clear skies out there, but some of the moisture left over from the rain that we had and some other factors. That's why we do have some fog. Notice those uh, two numbers. First of all, 56 and then that bottom number over there, 54 dew point. When those things are neck and neck, you don't have much of a breeze out there. Clear skies again. That's why we're seeing some fog. Hi today. This is not going to feel like December. Almost well, basically 10 degrees above normal, getting up into the, uh, the mid 70s. As far as the aquifer is concerned, no change yesterday. A push will take that, I guess. And mold is on the moderate side. That should start to go down, especially over the next couple of days with some drier air moving on in here. But first things first, notice visibility around the area. Mile and three quarters there at uh, Port S.A., Stinson, over around Gonzales, got a lot of very thick fog and further on off to these. Now, Bernie does well. Now it's just all of a sudden changed just at the drop of a hat there. But again, further off to the east, we've got some thicker fog and along the Rio Grande a little bit there. But the dense fog advisory is only in our eastern counties up until nine o'clock this morning. Does not include Bear County, does not include Atascosa County, but just obviously be on the lookout for that because it will get thicker. Now there is some drier air that is going to start to work its way in here. Temperatures right now are about 10 degrees above normal. Dew points though up in the uh, hill country are down in the 40s and even drier beyond that. And that will come on in here and that's going to get rid of some of this fog around here this morning. And uh, like I said, mold is on the moderate side because of some of this moisture. Now, patchy fog kind of a dampish chill out there. Then mostly sunny, drier air comes in mid 70s later on today. The weekend, cool mornings, very warm in the afternoon, and we're going to be up in the mid 70s. Then we go into next week. Few clouds, mild to leaning to the warmer side of things next weekend. And notice how there or next week I should say, and notice how there's no chance of rain either. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, happy December, Stephen. Oh, Mike, I wish we could say it's happy out there on the roadways. Uh, it's already uh, just 5 a.m. and we already have our first issue of the morning. This has actually been working since uh, just before 2 30 this morning and we have a crash that was reported a pretty serious one while we're working to get some details confirmed we do know that this involved an 18 wheeler and a red sports car and now we do know what at least one person was rescued during this crash but it's also led to the closure of that 410 westbound exit ramp to i-10 westbound again again this was reported sometime before 2 30 this morning you can see the road flares out there along with the flashing light so just please be on the lookout if your travels take you through there just look for a different route we're not seeing big delays just yet, but 410 westbound. Again, that exit's going to be closed until we see the crews wrap up their work. Hopefully everyone is doing okay and the injuries aren't that bad, but we'll keep a close eye on that as the morning commute does get moving. As of right now, it's still pretty quiet across the Alamo City as we give you a wider look at our map. A few of the construction spots that will take us into the weekend, but we'll talk about that later. Quick look at your travel times. I-10 westbound, if you're heading in from skiing this early in the morning, it's still pretty green with 28 minutes. 33 along 87 northbound if you are heading in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, 24 minutes right here to San Antonio. But back here at 410 west at Cherry Ridge, this particular shot at Transguide, our friends are keeping a close eye on the roadways, and we'll have more updates for you, including a big closure on 1604. That information coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a suspect following a shooting overnight. It happened around 1130 last night in the 20,000 block of Wilderness Oak in the Stone Oak area. Police say a man was in the breezeway of an apartment complex and when he was shot multiple times, a suspect got away in a black SUV. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. This morning, a lot of people across San Antonio not too happy about CPS Energy's newly proposed rate increases. The energy utility is proposing to increase its base rates for gas and electricity by 4.25%. And last night, our Avery Everett attended a public meeting and shows us what this could mean with winter just around the corner. A business built on keeping lawns green. 
is expanding to keep homes well lit. We provide everything, uh, lights, clips, timers and all. This lawn care company is leaning into holiday lights. It just gives it a really clean look. To keep up sales through the winter. Yeah, and just to keep our uh, team members busy. Lining gutters and leaving holiday cheer. Much brighter than uh, the box door lights. With lights that are less likely to send the Texas power grid into shock. Yeah, yeah, we only use LEDs, so they definitely use uh, less electricity. With winter just around the corner, some people here in San Antonio have concerns over the stability of the Texas power grid. But CPS Energy says that's one of the reasons it's requesting a rate increase to address infrastructure reliability. We need funding to be able to provide reliable service to our community. CPS Energy's proposal would increase its its gas and electric base rates by 4.25 percent. The utility is saying on average, customers' bills would increase by less than $5. We're aware that they're worried about their bills, and we want them to know that we have a multitude of resources to help them. CPS Energy presented this proposal to its trustees and the San Antonio City Council earlier this month. Anytime but Thursday night, a town hall for the community, too, with customers calling in to question CPS leaders. My question is, how is this going to benefit all neighborhoods? If approved in the coming weeks, new rates would take effect on February 1st of next year. But the problems from the winter storm of 2021 are far from forgotten. And there are still questions about what this season will bring. To see how this proposed rate could impact your own energy bill, you can head on over to KSAT.com where we have CPS Energy's calculator. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And San Antonio is getting bigger. City Council members have given the go ahead to annex more than 4,000 acres on the south side early next year. So the city has been eyeing that land for a decade, and the property owners signed agreements that temporarily saved them from previous annexations. However, now those agreements are expiring. You can read more about what happens next over on our website at KSN.com. This morning, a judge has ruled the Texas Department of Public Safety must release records related to its response from the Robb Elementary School shooting. After more than a year-long court battle, KSAT 12 News, along with dozens of other media organizations, will get long-awaited records stemming from the May 24, 2022 massacre. The request for information filed on the Texas Public Information Act were withheld by DPS officials, citing a pending investigation exemption. Per the judge's ruling, DPS must release the records within 20 days. DPS has until December 28th to file an appeal to the judge's ruling. Brett Cross, guardian of Isaiah Garcia, says if DPS does appeal, it will assure him their response to the shooting was insufficient. Uh, previously, the law enforcement agency indicated they will file an appeal to the ruling. If they do, it will further delay the release of records. The ceasefire is over in the Middle East. Overnight, Israel resumed combat operations after accusing Hamas of violating their truce. In the meantime, a new report out this morning claims Israel got a heads up about the October 7th Hamas attack months in advance. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, officials reportedly got a hold of the Hamas attack plan more than a year ago. This morning, a bombshell report claims Israel obtained the battle plan used by Hamas to carry out the October 7th attack more than a year ago. The New York Times reports the Israeli military reviewed a 40-page Hamas document last year, which called for a barrage of rockets at the outset of the attack, drones to knock out the security cameras, and automated machine guns along the border. Israeli intelligence reportedly dismissed the plan as aspirational, but Hamas followed the blueprint with shocking precision. Meanwhile, the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas expired overnight. Israeli fighter jets once again striking Hamas targets in Gaza. During the seven-day truce, Hamas released more than 100 hostages. <laughs> including eight yesterday. About 140 hostages remain in Gaza, including eight Americans. U.S. officials admit they know little about their condition. We will not stop working until we get every hostage back home with their families and loved ones. At the same time, we continue to surge humanitarian assistance. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is warning Israel to do more to protect Palestinian civilians as the fighting now shifts to southern Gaza. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. 
A big win for the Dallas Cowboys last night. Dak Prescott threw three touchdown passes, helping Dallas extend their home win streak to 14 games by rallying for a 41-35 victory over the Seattle Seahawks on Amazon Prime. Prescott's 12-yard pass to Jake Ferguson put Dallas in front with four and a half minutes to go. Cowboys set up a rematch with NFC East rival Philadelphia by escaping what would have been their first loss since falling to the Eagles 28-23 to start November. Being listed as questionable with right hip soreness, uh, Victor Wimbenyama got the green light to face the Atlanta Hawks last night. First quarter, Wimby in attack mode draws the foul on Clint Capella and lays it in. Three-point play, Spurs up 6-2. Later on, Hawks trying to inbound the ball but Capella to Capella, but Wimby breaks up the pass, creating a turnover. Spurs to take it back the other way and Keldon Johnson to Victor. He misses the first attempt but gets the rebound and scores. San Antonio led 66-62 at halftime. Here's the highlight of the third quarter. Off the uh, Mick Hoss, Mick Hawks miss, Devin Vassell grabs the rebound, gets a full of steam and takes it right to the rim for a super sweet basket and one. His teammates are loving it as they should. Look again, that's a Kobe-esque move. And Spurs led 105-103 after three. Fourth quarter, final seconds. Hawks up two, inbounding the ball. Check out Jeremy Sohan. Picks off the pass, races back for the tie and misses. But he's called for offensive foul, and that's ball game. Spurs suffer their 13th straight loss. Yes, unlucky 13. The final score, 137-105. Uh, 135. That was a close one, guys. Spurs will next play at the Pelicans tonight at 7 o'clock. It was close. I kept checking my app to see how they were doing while I was doing other stuff. And I was like, okay, they're ahead. We have a chance. We have a chance. And then... Uh... I forgot they even played. I was so busy watching Cowboys last night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You were on the other end. <laughs> 5 11, 56 degrees. And Tesla's long-awaited cyber truck is here. We're going to show you how much it costs and how far it can go on a charge. Up next, a mother accused in a plot to murder her husband is in, in the Bahamas is heading back to court. And looking out there with a live cam, no rain, but like fog in some areas. So be careful with that on your way to work. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 515. The Georgia mother accused in a plot to murder her husband in the Bahamas is headed back to court. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Georgia mom accused of planning a murder for hire plot to kill her estranged husband in the Bahamas headed back to court. Lindsay, you want to say anything about the allegations? Lindsay Shiver, a mother of three on a $100,000 bail in the Bahamas, charged with conspiring to kill former college football player Robert Shiver with the help of her boyfriend and an alleged hitman. According to a police report, investigators say Lindsay admitted to sending messages and photos saying, kill him. Lindsay's lawyer saying in a statement, the evidence will demonstrate Lindsay's innocence. Because she is in the Bahamas, she has to submit herself to their legal process and they have a very different court system, a very different judicial system, a very different legal system than the one that she would face in the United States. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what's expected from Shiver's court appearance and what's next in the case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 516, 56 degrees. We got there with Transguide. I know we had some problems earlier. And looking at the flashing lights there off of Loop 410 at Cherry Ridge, we're going to check back with our Stephen Cavazos about the problems this morning. The Chase Inc. Business Premier Card is made for people like Sam who make everyday products designed smarter. Like a smart coffee grinder that orders fresh beans for you. Oh, genius. For more breakthroughs like that, I need a breakthrough card. Like ours, with 2.5% cash back on purchases of $5,000 or more. Plus unlimited 2% cash back on all other purchases. And with greater spending potential, Sam can keep making smart ideas. A brilliant reality. The Inc. Business Premier Card from Chase for Business. Make more with yours. Ah, mornings. Cough? Congestion? I'm feeling better. All in one and done with new Mucinex Kickstart. <laughs> Headache? Better now. New Mucinex Kickstart gives all in one and done relief with a morning jolt of instant cooling sensation. <laughs> it's comeback season. Herbal Essences is packed with naturally derived plant ingredients you love. And none of the stuff you don't. Our sulfate-free collections smell incredible and leave your hair touchably soft and smooth. Herbal Essences. Welcome back. Just about 
520 on our December 1st, wow. and we've got an overnight issue that remains an issue. It, it is, and you know, this is something we've been tracking uh, before uh, we even started the newscast, mm -hmm. something we discussed in our early morning meeting, a pretty big crash that happened around 2.30, right behind us, guys, but let's give you that wider look at TransGuide and show you what is happening out there. Now, this involved, from what we know, an 18-wheeler and a sports vehicle. Now, we do know at least one person had to be rescued from that crash, but the details are so limited at this time. We'll work to get that information, but right now, what we can tell you is that flyover ramp there you see on your screen is closed as drivers attempt to get on I-10. You may have to start looking for that different route because that could cause some delays for your morning commute. We take you right to our map and again, we're not spotting a big buildup just yet, but if you're heading along 410 westbound and are trying to get on I-10 west, Again, look for that different route because that will slow you down. Right now, the overall view of the map is still pretty quiet. No other issues to report, which is great, but later tonight, you can expect to see some full closures along Loop 1604 as part of the North Expansion Project. Remember, this work will start around 9 and finish at 5 in the morning. It takes us up to Sunday, December 3rd, and what we're going to see impacted are the 1604 westbound main lanes. This will actually be from the Lock Hill Summer Road exit ramp to the I-10 interchange, according to TxDOT. I'm drafting an article right now, but if you scan this QR code, you can get in the know before you have to go. We have other closures that are taking place today as well throughout the month of December. Can't believe we're saying that, but uh, we do have a lot taking place in and around the Alamo City, so plan the commute ahead of time. Mike? It was Labor Day just yesterday, you know? It feels like that. You know, was, yeah. yeah, so. Hey, big event coming up this weekend, of course, the Rock and Roll Marathon. I was just thinking about something. We should have done this graphic differently and had Steph on here running. Right? She's going to be running, yeah. Because she's going to be running in it. And uh, uh, Steph, are you back there? What is this good running weather? We're starting off in the 40s on Sunday, but it's going to warm up fairly quickly. So I know a lot of runners by late in the morning. It's going to be right around upper 60s. I don't know if they like that too well, but uh, no, uh, no precipitation to deal with out there. So actually a pretty good weather overall this weekend, but it is definitely going to be on the warm side. Beautiful, beautiful sunset yesterday over there at, uh, yeah, gorgeous in all capital letters at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, for that nice start this morning. We do have some clear skies out there. There's uh, the smokestacks over there at the quarry, and yeah, it's just beautiful. Now, some areas, Casterville, three-quarters mile visibility, stints in a hint of fog. Same thing with Port SA, Pleasanton. Then you go off to the east, and this is where some of the thicker fog is. Gonzalez, just a quarter mile visibility right now, and a little bit along the, uh, the Rio Grande as well. The dense fog advisory is to the east this morning up until 9 o'clock, so it is going to be sticking around. Now, we do have drier air out to the northwest. As a matter of fact, look at how those dew points have dropped Compared to this time yesterday, 16, 23 degrees, even 13 degrees lower in Kerrville. And that dry air will continue to work its way in here. So this is going to help to get rid of the fog uh, fairly quickly. We'll still have to watch out for it, obviously, for the next couple of hours, especially off to the east. And then we will stay on the drier side. We get a kind of a surge of drier air coming in here for the weekend as well. Throughout the day, temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady the next few hours. And then we will see a little more sunshine. We make it all the way up to 70 today at noon. Top off at 76. Normal high is 67, so about 10 above normal. Some clouds hanging around here this morning. We clear out very, very nicely, so it's going to be a, a good looking evening as well as going into this weekend. Now, as far as the, uh, the humidity, dew point temperatures, they will try and work their way back up a little bit. We get another little shot of some drier air cools us slightly by the first of the week, but that's going to come back up as we go into the latter part of the week along with temperatures. So today, 76, 75s over the weekend. Again, cool mornings, very warm afternoons, and a couple of more clouds maybe by uh, first of next week. High temperatures close to normal, lows on the warm side. And then as we go in toward the end of the week, it is definitely going to be warming up. And of course, Hanukkah begins sunset on Thursday. A lot more after this. Welcome back to GMS AM this Friday morning. Tesla's long awaited Cybertruck was finally delivered to its first customers at an event in Austin yesterday. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Tesla's long awaited Cybertruck. The first futuristic style vehicles have been delivered to about a dozen customers, and a new all wheel drive version is coming next year. It starts at nearly 80,000 bucks and can go 340 miles on a single charge. Next, TikTok has introduced the Artist Account. The feature offers up and coming musicians a new way to get discovered. To qualify, artists need at least four songs uploaded to the app. There's lots of interest, too. TikTok says more than 70,000 musicians are already signed up. 
Finally, WhatsApp has a new layer of security to keep your chats under wraps. The secret codes feature lets you hide your private chats if someone has access to your phone. Instead of popping up in a folder, the chats will only appear when you type in your unique password in the search bar. A hacker stole my password once. I never did catch him. He must have ran somewhere. Those are your tech bites. Okay, that was so cute. He's got a book or something. Jamie, what do you think he's doing? How does he get come up with these every day? He's just clever. He's just clever. clever. Yeah, I, right. I think he is, and I think sometimes he has help. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. There's a, we've talked about it. There's a team in a basement at ABC's <laughs> headquarters on the Upper West Side of New York working on these little jokes. 528, 56 degrees. Ahead on GMSA, local high school getting ready to perform during the 20th and 29th annual Mariachi Extravaganza weekend. Now coming up next, what the students say is the hardest part about getting ready for such a competition. And ahead on GMSA at 6, if you're thinking about making some holiday donations, be careful how you can avoid scams looking to steal your money. Hi there, good morning. It is Friday, December 1st. Happy Friday, gang. Yes, happy Friday. We made it after, uh, you know, Thanksgiving break for some of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, to put a, a cherry on top, thank you to everybody for No Shave November. Yes. We surpassed yes. our goal. It was a fantastic yes. month, but round yes. of applause for 20, some great yeah, it, fundraising. Good job. Yeah, good, job. good job, Michael. 23,000 yes. for our team. Uh, we came in second in the country. Mm -hmm. Max Massey came in second mm -hmm. individually in the country. Yes. So and thank you for all your... You're fourth in the country. Yeah, thank you for all your... That's donations awesome. Thanks, guys. That's, so much that's great and again not only and you can continue to to donate to a we lot of mind. these charities <laughs> as well and of course it was to you know raise awareness for uh, for men's yeah. men's health especially so go get yourself checked out so just because the november's over doesn't mean you gotta stop with that and it is now december it's not really going to be feeling too much like no. it no. uh this morning it is sort of that dampish chill out there we've got temperatures uh, in the 40s 50s around much of the area and a lot of humidity when you have these two numbers that are, as I say, neck and neck, temperature and dew point temperature, not only does it give you that sort of damp chill because relative humidity is so high and that it kind of conducts the heat away from your body, but then also you get some fog to form up and not everywhere, but look at that. Castroville at three quarters of a mile, three miles at Port SA in the metropolitan area, except for over there on the west side is pretty good, but then you go east over toward Gonzales, got a quarter mile visibility and then got some fog around the uh, the Rio Grande as well. So we'll have to be on the lookout for that. But there is a lot drier air up here in the Hill Country, which is going to start to push on in here throughout the course of the morning. So that's going to help to prevent a lot of thick fog west of this dense fog advisory, which is in effect up until nine o'clock this morning. And this does include Guadalupe as well as Wilson counties, then east of there. Doesn't mean you're not going to see fog off to the west, obviously. And like I said, temperatures 40s, 50s all around the area right now. Mold is moderate. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to make it up to 70 at noon. It's going to be warm. It's not, like I said, not going to feel like December. That number is about 10 degrees above normal across the board. A lot of sunshine today, though. And this is the way it's going to be over the weekend. A little cooler in the morning, but still very warm, undecember like this weekend. How about the first full week of December? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Steven, still got that problem over there on the uh, northwest side? We do, Mike. And, you know, drivers just want to be very mindful this morning. Things are quiet behind me, but they're at 410 West at Cherry Ridge. That's our big problem spot of the morning. As you see, that ramp is blocked at this hour due to a crash that occurred sometime after or before 2.30 this morning. Now, for the most part, the commute is still quiet, but if you are heading down 410 Westbound to get on the I-10 Westbound, you will still see that closure in place, as we just saw in the TransGuide camera. Been there for almost three hours now, but we're going to hope for a better update sometime soon. Right now, just be on the lookout for anything that could cause any slowdowns. So far, we're not seeing that as we give you a wider view of the map. Looks like a stall vehicle may have popped up there. So again, just be on the lookout for those closures that are in place. And if you plan on lacing up your shoes for the biggest running event of the year, yes, we are talking about the Rock and Rolls Running Series. We have our Katrina Weber who is live along the route in Katrina. Are we seeing those street closures in place just yet? Well, no street closures per se, but lots of uh, preparations for those closures. All we need is a few thousand runners down here uh, to get things going. But take a look. We have some barricades. You'll notice these 
all over downtown just sitting here on the street corners as they get ready to put them in place uh, for this weekend's events. Now we have races Saturday and Sunday in downtown and beyond. Uh, I noticed that there are signs along some of the parking meters so you'll want to pay attention to those if you're heading downtown just to make sure you're not parking in a place that is going to be closed off. Now again we have uh, races Saturday and Sunday. This Travis Park, if you look across the street, all lit up for the holidays, but it's also going to serve as the finish line for the races tomorrow, the 5 and 10K races. Uh, the races of Sunday, the, the marathon and the half marathon will end at UTSA's downtown campus. Let me uh, give you a look at what you're, you can expect from the video that we have from last year. When we had about 17,000 people take to the streets of San Antonio throughout the weekend last year for those races. Uh, this weekend, uh, we don't know exactly what to expect, but you can expect that it, there will be a lot of people on the roads, uh, people who have been trained for months and are going to leave it all on the table or more correctly on the streets of San Antonio. Now speaking of streets, over on our website we have a list of the closures along with maps for the routes for those races and again you can find those on our website ksat.com. Now if you're heading down here this weekend to run or perhaps just to come down and cheer along some of the runners, you might want to find uh, another way to get around, maybe carpool or maybe uh, some other transportation such as a via bus because I can bet you that parking is going to be pretty difficult down here as well as driving. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, the search is on for this man, 25-year-old Faustino Diaz, after a short standoff that happened yesterday at a north side apartment complex. This was a scene on Cripple Creek near Harry Wurzbach and Garner Middle School. A SWAT team went inside an apartment yesterday and found Diaz had left. and Three children were left alone. Diaz was already wanted on several other warrants, including one for sexual assault of a child. So far, it's not clear if he'll face additional charges after the standoff. And they're not easy things to talk about, but last night, Case had hosted a town hall about infertility and pregnancy loss. A local therapist and fertility doctor joined our panel for Don't Suffer in Silence. They spoke with Nightbeat anchor Stefania Jimenez and answered many of your questions about the link between obesity and infertility in men and women, and how women with polycystic ovary syndrome can get help conceiving and dealing with pregnancy loss. Unfortunately, it's very common, and something like 30% of pregnancies end in miscarriages. And we learned that when a couple suffers a loss, one partner might not grieve the same way. It's common for not everyone to grieve in the same way, and sometimes initially couples uh, were really joined together, but then sometimes one partner needs a little bit more time, um, and they might find that one partner is pulled away. Um, oftentimes I can see um, maybe a, a couple and um, maybe one partner is holding back their emotion because they don't want to add in any additional distress to the other partner, but that can really create a rift in the relationship too. Now this panel just scratched the surface. The town hall also covered how you can help someone struggling with pregnancy loss. We invite you to scan this QR code on your screen that will lead you to our special town hall discussion called Don't Suffer in Silence. Friday morning, 538, 56 degrees. And there will be a lot of mariachi musicians in San Antonio this weekend to compete in the 29th annual mariachi extravaganza. Now, up next, we're going to tell you how one local school is preparing for one of the biggest competitions. Outside with live cam this morning, yeah, just a little bit warmer out there. Crystal clear shot looking back towards downtown. Some of you are dealing with some significant fog. Uh, Mike will tell you where and we've got a look at your weekend forecast straight ahead. 1,000 mariachi musicians will convene in San Antonio to compete in the 29th annual mariachi extravaganza competition this weekend. And Harlandale High School's mariachi is among the nearly 50 mariachi groups who will perform during the national competitions at the Lila Crockerel Theater. And Sarah Costa joins us now with the competition, you know, telling us a little bit more how it works. Good morning, Mark and Steph. I love mariachi extravaganza. I've been covering it since I was in Corpus Christi for 15 uh, years. 
And just to see these students at the high school level compete is extraordinary. The competition winners will open for the esteemed Mariachi Nuevo Tecaltilan on Saturday, December 2nd at 7.30 p.m. at Lila Cockrell Theater. I had the opportunity to speak with some of the Harlandale High School Mariachi students about what this competition and mariachi music means to them. Ready? Perderte. Together. It makes it like really nervous, especially since there are like three high schools from San Antonio. We want to show like what we can do to the rest of the valley, you know. So this is actually going to be our first year competing at the Extravaganza. Now we've competed in other um, events, but this one is one of the major events, probably the biggest event uh, uh, around that you can imagine here in the state of Texas. <laughs> Ready for the singing, ready for the first singing. We'll have like three pages to memorize, full of music. <laughs> it's probably the hardest part. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. I like how it sounds. Um, I really get into playing like, once I hear all the other instruments, I just, just go away, everything goes away from me. Friday, is when um, the varsity students will have their clinic and they'll compete on Friday as well. It's gotta be a little like hesitation. It can't just be dun, dun, no, dun. Anytime you come out on top, you get bragging rights, number one, of course. You get to be on one of the biggest stages out there as well um, to be able to open for, for one of the largest groups, uh, well-known groups in the world. I'm the first uh, person to be a mariachi in my family, but it was always like a thing for us. Like if it was somebody's birthday or we're celebrating a quince or something, where there has to be mariachis playing. So it just like makes my family proud. We get in the moment, so it's like enjoy what you're playing, like have fun with it. Have fun with what you're playing, but really think much about it. it. Makes me feel good, like I'm representing something that I love. So it just like puts me out there. And you can go and support and cheer Heartlanddale High School Mariachi. And there are other, there are about three to four other San Antonio schools competing. And this draws schools from all over the country. I know they have schools from Nevada and Washington State coming in to compete. And of course, the winners get to perform on Saturday. But that competition again is today and during the day on Saturday at Lila Cockrell Theater. You can find all that information. Just head to ksat.com. Mark, Steph. I bet that's cool to watch. Thank you, Sarah. Great piece. 545, 56 degrees. Look out there with Trans Guide. Looking over now at Highway 90 at Couples, where things are moving for now. A couple of the roadways look pretty good. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos about how the roads look very soon. All right, let's get a look at traffic here at 548. We want to show you what's happening around town there at 35 at San Marcos. We're seeing traffic pick up just a bit out there. Nothing too drastic, but we're getting closer to 6 a.m. So we're still keeping our eye or keeping our eye on a few problem spots. Let's take you to our map and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 410 westbound that exit to I-10 westbound is still closed after a crash occurred earlier this morning. I'm still seeing those flashing lights out there at 410 West at Cherry Ridge. We'll show you that shot in just a moment, but other than that, the map is still pretty quiet. Not seeing any major issues, but just plan ahead, especially next week. More closures are on the way for the 1604 North expansion project. We talked about what was happening this weekend, but this is going to take place Monday, December 4th and finish up on Friday, December 8th. That full closure uh, right there at 9 p.m. to 5 in the morning. We'll see the loop 1604 eastbound, eastbound main lanes closed from the Vance Jackson Road and exit ramp to the Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. A lot of closures taking place this weekend as well into the early days of December. So we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning as well as into the weekend. But let's get you one more shot here at 410 West at Cherry Ridge where we continue to see those flashing lights. Remember that exit ramp is blocked. So if you're trying to make your way through, look for a different route. Those first responders have been out there for more than three hours now. So let's hope they can get the job done as safely and on time. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yes, we hope so. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend or next weekend, head to the Tobin. Ballet San Antonio's oh, Nutcracker yay. is going on. So, right. yeah, beautiful performance. Always great time. Did you so. bury the lead? 
Yes, he did. <laughs> no. Mike, it's, Mike. Isn't it again? Once yeah. again, I have yes. the privilege of being Mother Jane. And they've once again uh, had different people on all the different performances right? from around town that have been nominated for it. So and Mike's been yes, doing this get, like 40 years now. I get to so do it. It's been amazing. I it's like eight years, but I get to be Mother Ginger again. <laughs> nah. tonight, so. I know. You, and you're awesome. You love yes. doing that. It's going to be interesting because seeing those, <laughs> being behind the stage, yeah. behind Aww. stage with those performers there, right. those ballet dancers, is just amazing watching the talent. Right. So got, imagine so. Mike as Mother Ginger. So the big poofy gown. Skirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then and then crazy makeup. First, and then the beard. First year with the beard. That's great. So. Yeah. That's yeah. Something to look at. That'll be interesting. But yeah, it, it's it's so much fun. It's such a great performance. So they, well, they do such a wonderful job. So Break a leg? Well, yeah. I'm just standing on a platform underneath that, that skirt. So anyway. Uh, don't, please please uh, don't break a leg. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's easier at this age. Anyway, uh, Kurel, <laughs> Shriner Park this past weekend. Great colors on that tree. Look at how gorgeous that is. Thank you very much for that. It's a KSAC Connect picture. That'd be a nice little drive out into the uh, into the hill country this weekend. It is going to be on the warm side. All right. Speaking of warm. December should be at 67 degrees. We're going to be a whole lot hotter than that today. And the normal low is 45. That's for today. Then once we get into Christmas Eve on the 24th, all the way through January 20th, so almost for an entire month, this is the coldest time of the year historically. Normal high temperature, average high is 63. Average low is 41. Hopefully it turns out like that or even colder. But uh, like I said, these are only the averages and it's going to be a lot warmer than that as far as the high temperatures today as well as this weekend. Got a lot of clear skies, beautiful view of downtown. This is that uh, 10 410 camera and we do have in places some fog. Castorville is now at zero visibility. So if you're going out 90 into Port SA, you're going to run into some of that. And then out there in uh, the western portion of the uh, county and then also off to the east, we've got a lot of thick fog on top of that. Now, temperatures 54 in town. This is the dew point temperature and we've got drier air, which is going to be coming on in here throughout the course of the day. So that's going to help to get rid of the fog. And like I said, it is going to be on the warm side. We're already well above normal by noon and then top off at 76 degrees and then beyond that temperatures stay very warm this weekend. We make it up into the mid 70s today, tomorrow, Sunday, a little bit cooler the next couple of mornings. So chilly mornings and then very warm afternoons. We're gaining got some dry air gaining about 30 degrees each day S down slightly the first part of the week. Still some humidity hanging around here, so those low temperatures will be on the warm side and then it's going to start to warm up into next weekend. We're looking at probably back into the 70s by next weekend. I love your old school Christmas tie today with Santa and yes, a nice old school it looks tree nice. and, and my nutcracker cufflinks. So. Oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Celebration of this. Yes, so. appropriate oh, for tonight. Yeah. Yes, very fantastic. Good. Uh, 553, 56 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, five, seven, six, fireball one. Daily four, eight, four, five, zero, fireball eight. Cash five, 13, 29, 30, 32, 35. Texas two step, one, two, six, 21. Bonus ball 23. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following that breaking news. A new report from the New York Times claims Israel learned of Hamas's October 7th attack more than a year ago. Israel forces, of course, are resuming their military campaign against Hamas after the ceasefire ended. Our team on the ground with the latest. And Felicity Huffman speaking out for the first time about that college admission scandal, why she did it, and who she's apologizing to. We will see you later right here on GMA. It is December 1st, and through the 12th, you could donate new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign. It's through the organization Zapatos. You can drop those off at any of the seven San Antonio Police Department substations around town. They need shoes and socks for toddlers through adults. We have all this information on KSAT.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, Spurs were so close to ending their long losing streak, how it all went down last night, and when they might get their first win here in the month of December. Plus, a local high school getting ready to form at the 29th annual Mariachi Extravaganza this weekend. What students say is the hardest part of the competition. And up next, Rock and Roll Marathon almost here. Katrina Weber has street closures you'll need to avoid this weekend. And we are still having uh, problems out there on the northwest side. This is at 410 and I-10. Uh, this has been an issue that's been around for hours. And we're hoping that it's getting closer to clearing We'll get an update with Stephen Cavazos on the other side of this break. 
shoulder shake. Throw! That's going to be caught by Ferguson. Touchdown. This morning, Cowboys fans waking up to a rare victory Friday after a last minute win in prime time. The highlights from Thursday Night Football in just a few minutes. And rise and shine, look out there with live cam. We're starting at 55, so still a little cool, but we don't have the rain this Friday morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you, 6 a.m. on your Friday. Yes, December 1st. Yes, we made it to Friday, and we made it to December. And so uh, quick off, uh, you know, congrats for the no-shave donations that you guys brought in. Uh, Mark, you kept the beard, though, right? I did, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it for a while, but it's, it's trimmed up. But it was a fantastic month. Thank you for your donations. We surpassed our goal this year, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. And Mike, also. Yeah. I'm Even. listening to my wife, as I usually do, and <laughs> just get, hanging on. Smart my man. boys wanted me to smartest take, man in the room. They wanted me to, to hang on to it uh, a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I can, you know, get mistaken for Santa Claus here and there with the beard. So, all right, no. you're anyway, getting closer. You're um, too thin. <laughs> yeah, December, it's not going to feel like it with our high temperatures, so we're going to be definitely on the warm side. It's kind of a, a damp chill this morning, though, with uh, a lot of humidity out there, and that's helping out with some fog. And look at that. All around the metropolitan area, pretty good visibility. Head west on 90, you're going to run into basically just pea soup out there. The fog is so thick in Castroville, and it's only at one little tiny spot, and then it clears out by Hondo. Then you go east on 10, you're going to run into some fog around Gonzales out there, a little bit along the, uh, the Rio Grande, but we're just going to have to continue to watch this for the next couple of hours. Dense fog advisory for our eastern counties, so even though there's a ton of fog over there around Castroville, you're not in the, uh, the dense fog advisory. We will get some drier air that's going to move on in here over the course of the mid to late morning, and so that's going to really prevent that fog from forming up. Temperatures right now, we've got mid 40s in Kerrville, 54 here in town. So we are starting off about 10 degrees above normal, may fluctuate a degree or two here and there. Mold is on the moderate side. Throughout the course of the day, a lot of clouds around here, some clouds and a lot of fog, the patches here and there. Then we get up to 70 at noon, partly cloudy skies already above the normal high temperature, which is right now 67 degrees. And then we're going to top off at 76. So it is definitely going to be warm today as well as over the weekend. A lot of folks are going to be hitting the road as far as lacing up the running shoes for the rock and roll marathon. And both days start off kind of coolish in the morning and then very warm. We're going to be gaining roughly 30 degrees throughout the course of the day, both tomorrow as well as on Sunday. But no uh, no rain to deal with anything like that. As a matter of fact, we don't really have much at all in the forecast, maybe way down the road. We'll take a look at that and some temperatures for the first week of December coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still a problem on the northwest side? Yes, sir. We are still tracking things closely here, Mike, at 410 West at Cherry Ridge. And this is just a shot from Transguide, but now let's give you a wider look and show you what's taking place out there. And if you're just waking up, this is that flyover ramp from 410 West to get into I-10 westbound. It's been closed due to a pretty serious crash that occurred sometime before 2.30 this morning. So first responders have had their work cut out for them. You can see that we still see those flashing lights along with a line of road flares in place from that shot at Transguide. Now, we're not sure when this is going to reopen, but we've had our eyes on this all morning long, so be on the lookout. We've not seen significant delays just yet, but you may want to start planning that commute if your drive does take you through there. We'll keep a close eye on that, and let's keep our fingers crossed. We'll have a better update to report a little bit later on in the newscast. Now, the wider view of the map here at 6 a.m. doesn't really show any congestion. We're not seeing any other problems. However, we're keeping an eye on the weekend and as well because it's the biggest running event of the year. Yes, we are talking about the Rock and Roll Marathon. And before you lace up those running shoes, Katrina Weber is live near Travis Park. And Katrina, there are things runners may want to know before they head out there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, if you look throughout downtown, it's a little bit like being at the starting line for a race. We're definitely at the ready. We've got signs and barricades all just uh, on the side of the road waiting to go, waiting to be put in place for these races this weekend. Now, we're here near Travis Park because this is going to be the finish line for the races tomorrow. That's the 5K and the 10K races. They will wind up here at Travis Park. Uh, beautiful setting here for that finish line. It's very festive. But uh, what you might want to keep in mind is if you do try to park on any of the streets, we've also noticed that there are signs at the parking meters telling you the hours that they're going to be closed. So pay close attention to that because the last thing you want to do is to have your car towed. 
Now, uh, we are expecting thousands of people this year. Let me give you a look at how things were last year when we had about 17,000 people hit the roads here, hit pounding the pavement. Now, this wrapped up months of training for many of those people just getting to that finish line. And that's going to be the same this, uh, this weekend. When they cross the finish line, they will wrap up all those months of pounding the pavement, uh, training for these races. The 5K, the 10K tomorrow morning, and then Sunday morning is when we have the half marathon and full marathon. Now, speaking of the roads here, we do have some information on our website about the exact closures and the routes for those races. All of that on KSAT.com. You can check it out there. Now, if you're planning to head down here yourself to run or maybe coming down to cheer on someone, you may want to think about carpooling or finding another way to get down here because parking is probably going to be at a premium. Maybe catch a via bus all the way down here so that you don't have to worry about parking at all. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, San Antonio, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect after an overnight shooting. So this happened around 1130 last night in the 20,000 block of Wilderness Oaks. This is in the Stone Oak area near the city's far north side. Police tell us that a man was in a breezeway of an apartment complex when he was shot multiple times. So the shooter got away in a black SUV. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. International Bridge One in Eagle Pass has been shut down until further notice. Now those coming into the United States are having to reroute. On Monday, Customs and Border Protection decided to shut down incoming traffic at Bridge One due to what they're calling a large influx of migrants coming into the border. People trying to go back and forth from the U.S. and Mexico are having long wait times with only Bridge Two operational. Businesses in the area are worried this might interrupt the economic boost that comes from those coming across the border to shop for the holidays. Compramos demasiada mercancía. We bought a bunch of merchandise to sell for Christmas. The belts, the buckles, all the accessories that you can have to prepare a store. But no, there's no people. Vehicles heading south from the U.S. into Mexico will not be affected by this closure. And a lot of people across San Antonio are not happy about CPS Energy's newly proposed rate increases. The energy utility is proposing to raise its rates for gas and electricity by 4.25%. And last night, our Avery Everett attended a public meeting and shows us what this could mean as we approach winter. A business built on keeping lawns green is expanding to keep homes well lit. We provide everything, uh, lights, clips, timers and all. This lawn care company is leaning into holiday lights. It just gives it a really clean look. To keep up sales through the winter. Yeah, and just to keep our uh, team members busy. Lining gutters and leaving holiday cheer. Much brighter than uh, the box door lights. With lights that are less likely to send the Texas power grid into shock. Yeah, yeah, we only use LEDs, so they definitely use uh, less electricity. With winter just around the corner, some people here in San Antonio have concerns over the stability of the Texas power grid. But CPS Energy says that's one of the reasons it's requesting a rate increase to address infrastructure reliability. We need funding to be able to provide reliable service to our community. CPS Energy's proposal would increase its its gas and electric base rates by 4.25 percent. The utility is saying on average, customers' bills would increase by less than $5. We're aware that they're worried about their bills, and we want them to know that we have a multitude of resources to help them. CPS Energy presented this proposal to its trustees and the San Antonio City Council earlier this month. Anytime, but Thursday night, a town hall for the community, too, with customers calling in to question CPS leaders. My question is, how is this going to benefit all neighborhoods? If approved in the coming weeks, new rates would take effect on February 1st of next year. But the problems from the winter storm of 2021 are far from forgotten. And there are still questions about what this season will bring. To see how this proposed rate could impact your own energy bill, you can head on over to KSAT.com where we have CPS Energy's calculator. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And looking ahead, San Antonio is getting bigger by a few thousand acres. So city council members have given the go ahead for the city to annex more than 4,000 acres on the south side early next year. The city has been eyeing that land for a decade and the property owners signed agreements that temporarily saved them from previous annexations. However, now those agreements are expiring. You can read more about what happens next over on our website at kset.com. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. 
The game was on Amazon Prime last night, so not everybody got to see it, but the Cowboys on a roll after a big win on Thursday night football. Dak Prescott threw three touchdown passes, and the boys extend their home win streak to 14 games by rallying for a 41-35 victory over the Seahawks. Prescott's 12-yard pass to Jake Ferguson put Dallas in front with four and a half minutes remaining. After that, Micah Parsons, the defense, slammed the door on the Seahawks, hockey, uh, stopping them on fourth down to seal the win. Looking ahead, Cowboys win sets up a rematch with NFC East rival Philadelphia by escaping what would have been their first loss since falling to the Eagles 28-23 to start November. The highly anticipated matchup is December 10th on Sunday Night Football. Well, I'm happy that the Cowboys won. I was just hoping that the Spurs would, would join them in that, in that winning section. Yeah, we're going to delve into that in a yes. second. 6, 10, 55 degrees. That's right. Speaking of our Spurs, they were so close to ending their long losing streak, how it all went down last night and when they could get their first win this month. Going to be a nice Friday out there. Some have been seeing clear skies all night. Others have seen some low clouds and fog. But right now, a beautiful shot looking out. And you can see the, uh, the lights on for Christmas over at the Quarry Market and Concord Plaza. We'll be back.